Hey wizard, have you by any chance had any success arbitraging between FTX and DYDX or something of a similar nature? Uh, let me explain further. So here right now I'm looking at Bitcoin on DYDX, which is a decentralized order book. And here it's FTX, which is on a centralized order book. And so the idea here is, you know, how far do the prices sort of move away from each other on the same asset and then back to each other. And to gauge that, what I've done is I just looked at the ask price. So just picked a price here. I'm looking at the ask here of 29,686. It's 29,683. The spread on FTX is about $1. You can see between the bid and the ask. And here you can see it, it actually tells you what the spread is. Uh, and that spread varies between $1 and $6. It seems like with the higher trade volume and vol volatility, the spread here increases on DYDX, you'll, you'll just see it fluctuate basically. And so you can see the spread here is 0.01%. And so the idea is, right, when the, the prices diverge a lot, what you do is, for example, go long on DYDX and short on FTX on the same asset, and close both of those trades, you know, pretty quickly. Um, so, so that's the idea. And I had some time last night to actually just do some work on this. I, I won't have time to work on it today, unfortunately, but I wanted to show it to you because I really value your feedback. Um, I've been getting a lot of great intel and info in the comments, and it's helping me actually develop better solutions and tools uh, for all of us. And so, so I wanted to put this forward to you because I value your opinion. So here's what I found, right? So if you go and you track the price of this every second, or every one to two seconds, right? What's the price in FTX? What's the price in DYDX? You end up with something that looks like this. Uh, and actually I'll come back, let me just delete this chart for a second. We'll come back to this chart. You end up with you know a table and this table has got 3,199 rows of data. So that's about one and a half hours, call it, um, you know, of just time. So it's a very small block of time in the history of Bitcoin, but it gives us an idea of what this looks like. And you can see here's my DYDX price, here's my FTX price, and here's the difference between the two, right? Taking DYDX minus FTX. And so you can see here it's $14 um, dollars difference, $14, $16 difference, $10 difference, etc. right? Here, here it is. And you can actually see how long these opportunities last for. So for example, here this lasted, this $10 difference lasted four seconds. And actually, if I take the average, the average of these uh, is 12 and a half seconds, right? So on average, in that time period, DYDX was cheaper than FTX by about 12 and a half dollars, sorry. And so I've got some calculations over here. In fact, uh, I'll take you through them just so it makes more sense. The minimum here was 48. In other words, the, the most that these diverged was $48. And it was on the on the downside in terms of DYDX being cheaper, actually. And at one point, DYDX was more expensive by $15. And so what you could say is, you know, your range between the two um, is actually going to be $63 here. So the maximum in that time period of dollar movement was $63. So this is very detailed, right? I appreciate this is very detailed. Um, I'm going into a lot of detail here, but the detail matters because now let's plot the chart, right? So let's take the prices and the difference here and just put these on a line graph and see what that looks like. And right now that doesn't look very interesting, but actually what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just put these on a secondary axis here and this one here on the same secondary axis. Uh, and in fact, we don't really need the prices of both assets. We'll just put the price of Bitcoin here. And let's let's take a look at this. So this this gray line over here, which is very ugly. So let's actually just go and change this to, I don't know, make it green or uh, something like that. This green um, line over here, you can see is the difference, the price differences between the two exchanges. This blue line here is the price of Bitcoin. Now look at what happened here, right? When volatility spiked, i.e. the price gapped up, it jumped up. Well, it didn't gap, but it jumped. You see what I mean? So it's, it's, it's shot up. 
the minute the price shot up here, and this happened on both exchanges, the difference between the price on DYDX and FTX increased immediately, right? Which you would expect. But here's what's interesting. That happened for about, I don't know, what is this, a period of two minutes? This gap between here and here. Bump, 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 bump right? This price difference. It's like the market is trying to find an equilibrium again. So here it's got its equilibrium. You know, the occasional boom opportunity occasionally happens. Boom opportunity. But here, when a big event happens, bah, the market's in like, oh, right. All the bots, everything is like, it's all right, cool. We need to find our feet now, adjust. And for me, this is like for the retail, for the small guy like me, who's not pushing a lot of size, this seems to present an opportunity. And I don't know about you. I don't know if you've traded this. That's why I really value your feedback. You know, if you've traded this or you, you have an opinion on it, I really do value that. Because the way I see it is this is a great arbitrage. So, you know, the idea here is I would go long on DYDX and short on FTX here. And when the prices converge, I'd close those trades. Simple, simple strategy. Um, and you just do that over and over and you could even decide, okay, I'm going to do it here. Now, what becomes the problem? The problem becomes how long do these opportunities last for? So if I, you know, if I go and look here, for example, here, it moved to $28 difference, it lasted for one second. And if I go and find another, you know, big one here in the day to just eyeballing it, here we go, another 29. It didn't last very long. It went to $5 difference. Then it went to 25 and 28 again. Like, and this is the period of time when it, when it was kind of going crazy a bit. So, so what that means is you don't have long and you, you're not going to place limit orders to lower fees here because you need to be in the trade and you need to be in it quickly. So this becomes a high frequency trading issue. But that said, you know, if you're happy with like a $20 difference, etc, you, you know, you'll do okay, look, here's one for $40 difference, right? So another big one lasted for one second. Didn't last long. But the high frequency part can be solved, right? This is something that can be solved. Because if you can solve for this, you can do really, really well um, out of this. But the problem is actually also going to be the, the fees because really you're looking at point if you're if you're trading small size, if you're like me and you trade small size, yeah, you are you're gonna have an issue here. So um sorry, that's completely the wrong calculation. So the trading fee I'm gonna pay is gonna be about fifteen dollars if I was trading one bitcoin's worth. So if I was trading thirty grand's worth, most of you are probably like me, you're not doing you know that sort of size. Uh, a lot of you will be as well. But you're going to pay $15 just using a unit of one Bitcoin because I want to keep the math simple, right? The math is the same no matter the size here, because with lower fees and lower size also comes lower return, right? So it's all proportional. It's all the same. You also have to think you need to close that trade. So actually your fee is $30. And not only that, you're actually doing this on two exchanges. So your fee is $60. And one of the things I hate, and I talk about hating it often, is leverage. I always say leverage is the devil. Don't do it. Uh, the reason is because of the Kelly Criterion. If you don't know what that is, you absolutely, if you're into trading, must watch a video on the Kelly Criterion. We also have one on this channel. The Kelly Criterion is the reason. Every trader, it's the first thing I believe they should be taught is the Kelly Criterion. But that said, you know, you don't want to use leverage usually, but here using leverage might actually be the solution. And let me explain what I mean here, right? If I use leverage of say 10 X, my fee, I believe you can correct me if you think I'm wrong, but my fee doesn't increase by 10 X. And the, say, the reason I say I don't know is because I never trade leverage always would use one X, right? So, but my fee is not going to increase by 10 times. So my cost is still $60. And my return is multiplied by 10x. So let's say 
I make profit on a swing of say 20, right? So the dollar movement on my trade is $20. That's my arbitrage. That's how much I made, right? If I'm using 10x leverage, um, then my profit is actually 200 and my cost to trade is 60. So, you know, my profit on this trade, you would argue is 139, except it's not. <laughs> Except it's not. And here's why owning an exchange is like owning a money printer, right? These exchanges are making mega bucks, right? They're doing very well. Except it's not because you also have your spread. And your spread here on DYDX is a dollar right now, but this will be like $6 in high volatility, right? You, you don't know what spread you're going to get. And when you place a market order, you'll take what you get, right? Whatever they'll give you is what you have to take. So let's assume worst case scenario, my spread has moved $6. So I would guess then with leverage, that would mean 60, another cost of 60. So let's, you know, deduct this again from our profit. So our new profit is going to be that minus 60. Uh, sorry, minus 60 over there. Uh, that minus, I can't get used to Excel on a Mac, by the way. So now I'm at $80 profit. But I've also got my spread on the other side to take into account, which is 10. So on one Bitcoin, though, um, I should be making 70 bucks profit on a movement of $20. Did I get this math right? Let me know if I messed this up. But my point is that I'm pretty sure here that if you have the right strategy, and one of the things you could do is constantly move and cancel limit orders. Right, so you can have a limit order that's in place all the time. You're constantly popping your limit order in and out. If your limit order gets filled, i.e., the pro and the price gap was big because of where you placed your limit order, you've paid a much lower fee now, and that could be the activation for you to place a market order on the other side. So, for example, I place a limit order on DYDX. It gets filled here because of this price craziness, and then all of a sudden I'm in. So, so you could get quite advanced with this. I don't have time to work on it today. I've got other project work that I've committed to that I'm focused on today. Um, I've got the stuff for the platform as well, the flash gap stuff to continue on, the triangular arbitrage on that. Um, you know, the statistical arbitrage stuff that needs to be done by the end of next week. So there's a lot I've got to get done, but I'm very keen on this because I'd, I'd really like to get something like this up and running um, and I definitely want to draw on your wisdom. So let me know what your thoughts are. Until the next one, take care and talk soon.